John Clayton from 710 ESPN right now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. John, thanks for coming on short notice. No problem. We know that uh, big news today out in your neck of the woods, Michael Bennett coming to Philly. Not a surprise that he's moved, but surprise if Philly uh, uh, makes this, you know, kind of Howie Roseman slides in here. Yeah, and that's why I'm trying to figure out the fit because, again, <clears throat> Michael's a great player. I mean, you know, he's three-time pro bowler, eight-and-a-half sacks, you know, really one of the most intelligent defensive linemen in football because he starts out at end and he moves into tackle on the nickel. But what I'm trying to figure out, I was like, who is he replacing? I mean, is he replacing Vinnie Curry? Or where, where's the fit right now? Because, I mean, you look at that defensive line, I mean, you've got Brandon Graham there with uh, looking for a new contract. I mean, Fletcher's obviously one of the best in football. And then you've got, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, I mean, you've got Jernigan getting $12 million a year. So I'm trying to figure out where the fit is. Yeah, it sounds like Curry would be the odd man out. And you just mentioned intelligence. You know, the Eagles probably going to lose Curry. Bo Allen is a free agent. It seems like Bennett fills two needs with, you know, kills two birds with one stone. You lose those two guys, he kind of fills in because he could play inside and out, right? Oh, no question. No, in fact, uh, that's what he's so good at doing because, I mean, one, he's an edge rusher, even though, again, he's a little bit older, 32 going on 33. He'll be 33 in November. And then, of course, as a uh, three technique, he's uh, exceptional as far as his ability you know, to make, you know, good calculated gambles on when to try to go at a guard and try to get in there so he's he's good at very good at that and uh you know it's he's he's able to fight through injuries in fact a, a lot of times i thought with the moves that were made you know particularly bringing former eagle marcus smith over along with uh, getting Dion jordan that they were going to rest him well ba- bennett wouldn't come out of the games i mean he's still at the age of 31 going on 32 this past year was playing like 83 percent of the snaps and so it's like and you figure at that age it's almost too much but I mean he held up very well so that's one of the questions we had John Clayton's with us you know in Philly he's not gonna have to play that much is he gonna be okay with that you know where you don't have to be on the field 85 percent of the snaps you're back down into that 60 75 range yeah, I mean, you would think he would be okay on that, particularly uh, having gone through this trade. And understand when he and Cliff Abril signed with this team, uh, you know, they they were sack guys, but they weren't starters. And this is on one of the great uh, defenses in NFL history back in 2013. You know, they played 65% of the snaps, 63% of the snaps, but that was all coming off the bench. Technically, they weren't starters, and then eventually they both became starters on the, at the defensive end position. But I think he'll be okay on this because I think as he realizes he's getting a little bit older, maybe it's not a bad idea to cut down the play time. Again, I thought it was going to happen last year, but it didn't. He just stayed out there and stayed out there and never seemed to rest. Maybe Maybe now he's going to be in the mode, particularly with the talent that's on the Eagles' defensive line, to try to take a few plays and not be out there. John Clayton's with us. Uh, some of our listeners that are not happy with the move are uh, concerned that he'll upset the apple cart, uh, that he's not a great locker room guy. Uh, is that is that accurate? Well, it's it's varied in this way it is. He's, he's a great locker room guy because he's great with his teammates. That's one thing that's great. And he's also great with leadership. So from that, it's a big plus. Now, what's not going to go over well is that he's very politically activated. Now, again, this was permitted here in Seattle because Pete Carroll lets his players speak out. But sometimes it can get to a little bit of an excess. And so, you know, for those in the military, they're not going to be happy with him not standing up for the national anthem. And he will not. I mean, that's something that uh, he's very adamant about. He's in to Black Lives Matters, and he's very good at being uh, being good as far as all the causes that he's going to be involved in. But that's going to cause some negativity, I would imagine, among some of the fans. And I know at this stage here, when he was in Seattle, he probably got a little bit too extensive. I remember being at the Tennessee game, and what happened was that uh, you know. He and the teammates decided not to go out even on the field for the national anthem. And really, for the first half of the game, the team was very distracted and ended up losing to Tennessee after a slow start. They almost came back and won the game, but they did not in the end. So that's going to be something that's going to be of issue because I uh, understand, you know, he was, he was doing this. And then, of course, he goes to Vegas for the one fight that he was attending. And all of a sudden, you know, he has an incident with police where, uh, you know, they end up being very physical with him. And so he has a case that's going against the 
the Vegas police. And so that, I think, is going to be something of issue. But also understand Michael Bennett, the person. He is, is involved in, in so many different charitable things, helping people out, whether it's in Hawaii, overseas, several different things. I mean, I think he had something going on in Japan. He's an activist in a very positive state, but also an activist that's also going to cause a little bit of a rumbling as far as some of the things that he's going to say and some of the things he's going to do. But he's a great person and a great leader. Now, I'm looking big picture at this for Seattle, uh, you're starting to see the rumblings now. Uh, there's a report going around that Richard Sherman doesn't expect to be back next year with the Seattle Seahawks. Is this starting to become the beginning of the end for the Seahawks as far as them being a perennial championship contending team every year? Yeah, it looks like they're definitely retrenching right now to maybe, if they can, with Russell Wilson and what they still have left, maybe still be a wild card team and then try to reload for the 2019 season. I mean, they're not breaking everything down like it's not a tanking type of thing or anything of that nature, but, you know, they're now going through a major renovation. They had, uh, you know, eight coaches that were fired, six new coaches on the staff, and two that moved to different positions. That was a little bit more. And now, you know, they're basically going from a team that started. Started the season last year with eight Pro Bowl guys with experience at the Pro Bowl to maybe as few as three. So, you know, there's the changes are going to be Cam Chancellor may not be able to play this year because of a neck injury. Cliff Averill is going to be let go despite a neck injury. Richard Sherman is in the process of being told that he's either going to be traded or cut. So that's happening. Uh, you know, Rick, uh, Michael Bennett's already gone. Sheldon Richardson hasn't reached a new contract and didn't get franchised, so he could go. That's five Pro Bowl players that are not going to be with the team, you know, they'll still have two Pro Bowl linebackers and KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner. You know, they're still going to have uh, Earl Thomas. It looks like they were thinking of, they were thinking about trading him, but it looks like he'll stay with him. So they're going from eight to three. When you look at you know not only next season but the future of this Seahawks team, you still got Russell Wilson there, but again, the running game has kind of not been there. The offensive line has continued to struggle, and besides Doug Baldwin, you don't really have another receiver on that other side. Uh, do the Seahawks really need a big offseason to kind of continue to keep that train moving forward instead of sliding back? Yeah, they do. I mean, they need to get it right with some of the young players, and they also need to make proper trades to get the draft choices. It was kind of kind of funny with the because everybody thought that Michael Bennett was going to go to Atlanta for maybe because remember Atlanta doesn't have a fifth round pick, but maybe for a four, and then they get the seven back, and then here comes Philadelphia in making the trade. And what do the Eagles have in common with the Seahawks? Both franchises don't have picks in the second and third round, and both are trying to find ways to be able to you know get those uh, voids filled. And so it's kind of funny that these two teams matched up on this trade but overall i mean you know it's uh it's kind of interesting how this whole thing has transpired and the, how these two teams got together but yeah it's it was kind of interesting also when you look back and you think it's like well this really was matt tobin for michael bennett right you had a couple of listeners send that if in fact is the, is it the fifth round pick that seattle gave up earlier did they just you know send it uh back to uh, back to seattle I would think so, yeah, because, I mean, uh, that, that to me is probably what that pick is going to be. So, you know, we don't know for sure because technically it doesn't have to be registered. But my, okay. my read on it is going to be the Tobin pick. Yeah, and that was and a trade. The question they... is going to be, is the seventh round pick going to be uh, the other one involved in the Seahawks trade? So it could be just like a total wash. That would be great. Uh, you know, pretty funny to see. You know, so Bennett for Tobin. Uh, but Johnson's also involved. And we heard uh, your old colleague Adam Schefter mention there that, you know, the Seahawks were looking, as Deshaun mentioned, that they need a receiver out there. So they're going to take a crack with Marcus Johnson and see if maybe he could fit in because there was just no spot for him here in Philly. But he's an intriguing prospect. How, how good is he on special teams? Because that's, I think that is, is he a special teams uh, good player or not? He doesn't. No, he's not like a standout. No, not yeah. a, a standout guy. But uh, you know, he's a guy who can run four three forty, and uh, he's a guy that they really kept around here and played a lot when um, Alshon. Alshon Jeffrey, yeah. yeah, when Alshon went, he was banged mm -hmm. up a little bit. He got some playing time. Yeah, so what that, what that signals, with, and particularly picking him up with the speed and his size, is that they're anticipating that Paul Richardson, who right. is you know, a second-round pick from 2014, is going to hit free agency and go because, you know, I, I've, I've done a survey on just about every uh, every salary. He's probably going to get 7 to $8 million because he's probably the 
fifth or sixth uh, best receiver in free agency this year, so he's going to go. And they were in a position where they were trying to decide, you know, do they give a contract extension to Tyler Lockett or do they sign Paul Richardson? So I think the Marcus Johnson thing says that they're going to go ahead and uh, let Richardson walk. They also have Amari Darbo, who was a third-round pick from the year before who had a second-round grade. He'll probably step into the number three wide receiver mode. And then what they have to sort out right now is what happens at tight end because Jimmy Graham is going to go. Luke Wilson is up, but they'll probably get a chance to re-sign him. So there's a lot of adjustments going on this team. So there's no doubt. I mean, they're trying to reload a little bit, but they also need to get a little bit younger because this, uh, particularly on defense, they did get a little bit old. Yeah, and by the way, uh, that gives Seattle, what, four picks in the fifth round and uh, two in the seventh. So they're loading up some mid-round and late-round picks here as the Eagles have their six picks still. Um, Overall, this isn't a deal then that Seattle says, look, this guy can't play anymore. We don't want him. We're just going in a different direction and looking to get younger. Yeah, and that's where, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see now if Marcus Smith now comes back because... uh, How was Marcus out there? He was good. I mean, great, no, but good. I mean, a good, solid player. And what's great is that he gets together with Clint Hurt, who was the one who kind of talked him in from being a quarterback, a quarterback to a defensive lineman. And, of course, they worked together to a point for, for a while where he became that uh, first-round pick. But he did well. I mean, he fit in well with the team. He didn't get a lot of sacks, but he was able to get some pressures on the quarterback. And I think he liked it out here. But, again, he's a free agent right now. We'll see if he comes back. All right, John Clayton, 710 ESPN. Of course, uh, the Seattle Seahawks uh, and the Eagles make a trade. It can't be official till the 14th, but we did see uh, Bennett himself tweet himself in an Eagles uniform. He seems pretty happy. What, did, he, did he legitimately want out of there? Uh, to a degree, I mean, because remember, a lot of this started at the end of the season, about two days, uh, three days after the season, when he came out and says, I don't think I'm going to be back with the team. And, you know, a lot of this still goes down to, it's like, okay, maybe guys like Michael Bennett and others think the run is over for this team. Not as far as being a playoff team, but as far as being a Super Bowl team. And if that's going to be the case, you know, then uh, if you get to trade it to a team that went to the Super Bowl and won, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it was a tough day overall for the Bennett family. I mean, because Bennett gets traded, but he seems to be happy about it, and Martellus gets cut by the New England Patriots. Yes, uh, one Bennett up, one Bennett down. John Clayton, 710 ESPN. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you.